Now what we're going to talk about now is how do you prioritize that list. So we've now got seven items on my list, maybe you've got a similar number. How do you decide which of those is the most important? Which do you do first? You see, the way that list was written is purely an accident of history. You wrote one thing under the other, so the first things you wrote were at the top and then as time passed and you added more, they came further down the list. But that list is no more than, if you like, a historical document. It doesn't mean the thing at the top of the list is the most important. And yet the temptation is that when you have some spare time that you can just allocate to some of the items on your do-it list, you do the first thing first, the top one at the top of the list. But if that's not the most important, but the one at the bottom of the list is more important, well, you may never get to it. And so there could be consequences. So getting a feel of how important and how urgent something is, is very, very crucial to good planning of your discretionary time. Because that will help you to prioritize the list and to make sure that those things which are the highest priority are the things you give your attention to. And here's a little chart that a friend of mine developed to compare urgency and importance. You see, if something is urgent, that means it has to be done today. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's important. And you've got to ask yourself the question, well, if I don't get time to do it today, does it matter? Will there be any consequences? Am I letting someone down? Am I going to miss a deadline? Or am I going to fail in something that's going to be further down the road? So urgency doesn't of itself mean it's important. Importance, well, that is something that you can do and should do. It may be because it comes within your job description if you have employment and that you're employed to do such and such a job. It may be that the important item is right at the center of that job description. That your boss, if you like, would expect no one else to do it. That's why he's employed you and why he pays you. It may be that it's to do with your gifting, that you are a great encourager. And so that phone call to encourage someone only you can make. Because you have that wonderful gift, such a valuable one, of encouragement. So you can't say, well, can someone else make that phone call for me? No, it's you, because that's your gift. So that's what I mean by important. They're things that reflect your gifting or reflect what you are meant to do, particularly in an employed capacity. So let's just look at this chart and say, well, if it's both important and urgent, well, you get on and do it. So it becomes high on the priority list. If it's important, in other words, you should do it, but it's not particularly urgent, well, plan to do it. Decide, well, I can't do it today, and I can't do it tomorrow, but I'll do it the day after. And so, if you're using a diary, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later, you can turn over the page and just write it in two days hence. So when you get to that day, it's back on your do-it list for that day. If it's not important, but is urgent, in other words, if you shouldn't do it, but really someone should, well, delegate it, ask someone else if they can do it for you. And then if it's not important, nor is it urgent, well, don't do it, it's a waste of time. So forget it, just bin it. Okay, well, let's just go back then to my uh, do it list for Monday, those seven items that I put there. Now there's one thing on there, planning the conference meeting agenda, that is urgent. And so as I'm planning, I don't want to forget that. And so I put a little asterisk beside that on the list when I, when I look at the list. And uh, it just draws my attention to it when I'm planning. So how do I then try and decide 
what is the most important thing on that list and it is importance that needs to come to the top well I take the first item and I compare it with the other six so I'm making six comparisons and I decide well no it's not the most important so I then take the next item on the list and I compare it with the next five so I've now made 11 comparisons I've decided no still that's not the most important so I then take the next one on the list uh, completing a ministry proposal and compare it with the four below it no need to compare it with the ones above I've done that already and uh, so you now get up to uh, 15 uh, discussions 15 comparisons that need to be made it's, it's unwieldy you really can't do that and the longer the list comes the bigger that number um, becomes of comparisons you have to make it's just impractical and and you won't do it so comparing things on the list as it stands is not a good way of prioritizing that list much better is to look at that list and say well which are the one two three things that if I go to bed tonight and I've not done them I'm going to have something of a sleepless night in other words it really is important that that gets done today and I will then put an A beside in this case those three things if nothing else gets done today I do want to phone John Smith I do want to plan the conference meeting agenda after all it's got to be sent out to people otherwise they can't see it before we hold the meeting and I do want to complete this ministry proposal again so that the elders have a chance to read it before they hold their meeting and so I will put an A beside each of those three items I will then look at the remaining four items and think which of those is really the least important and least urgent if I don't do it for a week no one's going to worry and I'll try to put as many things in that category as I can but on this occasion I could only find one and that was the monitoring of the progress with Sally about the Easter outreach Easter is still a long way away so it doesn't matter if I contact her next week uh, she's in a different town I need to phone her uh, it's not important so that can that can wait and then the remaining items I put a B beside and so now we've got a list of seven things with three A's three B's and one C now of the A's I've only got three things to compare that's really quite easy so I can start calling them A1 A2 and A3 according to what I feel is actually the first thing to do so notice how A1 is actually the third on the list and if I had worked my way down this list it would have been the third item I got to but by prioritizing in this way I've said no the third item on the list actually should have been at the top but by putting A1 I needn't rewrite the list I've now identified that that is the most important thing that planning the conference meeting agenda is the second most important thing and then phoning John Smith is the third most important thing and so on with the B's and with the C's and so we now have these seven items prioritized they're not in the order in which I wrote them down but it's very clear where the priority is never incidentally put the same category for two things there should never be two A2s you have to do one before the other so make that decision don't say well I can't decide which is the most important you have to you're going to do one before you do the other make the decision and stick to it so now you've got those seven items and if you're putting this into a diary they can now be lined up alongside the appointments that you have for that day which here I've written on the right hand side at 11 o'clock I've got a meeting with such and such a person and at 3 o'clock I've got a phone appointment I wonder if you think of phone calls in appointment terms 
most of us don't because you're just having a conversation with someone and as you bump into them you have a, have a call, you have a phone, uh, you have a, a discussion. But in this case I knew that person was very busy and so in advance I dropped him an email and I said uh, can we have a call how about three o'clock on Monday afternoon? And he responded yeah that's fine and so I put it in my diary and I'll make that phone call at three o'clock. So that's now an appointment, that's no longer discretionary time. It's in my diary, I mustn't be doing anything else at that time. I must make that phone call. It's just as if I had an appointment with someone who walked into my room or I went to see someone uh, at a particular time. And so we have now both the appointment time and the discretionary time for Monday displayed before us. But what does that display look like? I guess that many people will have diaries. Uh, diaries are used for all sorts of purposes. There are some like politicians and sports stars and celebrities on television who will keep a diary because they know that one day they're going to write their memoirs and probably make a lot of money. And so they will record each day what they've done so that in due course they can write it all up in a book. That's obviously one purpose for a diary. But what I'm talking about here is more of a planning diary or an appointments diary. And so don't use that for recording uh, what you've done. Use it as a way of planning forwards what you're going to do. So that if there's an appointment coming up in a couple of weeks time in your diary, you write on that day who you're going to see and the time. And that is where you need to do your discretionary time planning as well. Because you need to have your appointments and your discretionary time laid out before you so that you can see them together. And there are a number of uh, items that you can just buy which will give you that opportunity. And uh, then there of course is the electronic method uh, with a smartphone and we'll talk about both of these. But as a vehicle to teach you I'm going to illustrate from what's called a day timer. That is a diary but more than a diary. It's called a personal organizer. And so it's about helping to organize all aspects of your life. It's not only about planning your time but it gives you an opportunity also to keep notes about meetings that you're going to have and so on. It's an organizer. And on the particular display I put in front of you there, the left hand side is the appointments and the do it list in the way that we saw in this last picture. Uh, but now it's in printed form. And then on the right hand side is just a notepad. So if I'm on the phone to someone, all the time I'm talking I'm just making little notes about the conversation so that when I put the phone down, if there are things I need to take action on or someone I need to contact, I've got it right there in front of me. So what are the benefits of having a personal organiser? Well first of all it gives you easy accessibility. You see a uh, a diary or a planner or a personal organizer is an extension of your memory. And so you want to have it with you because it's reminding you of things that you don't want to clutter your memory with. And when you get to my age, your memory is not very reliable. And so we have here easy accessibility. Second, it means that you are carrying those planning details always with you. So wherever you go, except when you go to the bathroom perhaps, you have them with you. It means that if uh, some thought comes to mind, you can just jot it down. So it provides a catch-all for those do-its. As those things come to mind, you just jot them down. And then in due course you can process them in the way that I've just talked about. You can give priorities to them. You can decide what day you're going to do it and so on. Next it allows you to make appointments. So if someone phones you, you just 
jot it down in there. You look in your diary and you see how busy you're going to be. And you write down that appointment. And then the non-diary bit of the personal organiser allows you to keep records, perhaps of meetings you get a hold or people you see regularly. Let me give you an example. I worked with Terry Virgo for many years. It was a great joy. We were good friends. And uh, as he fathered and founded the family of churches called New Frontiers, it was my joy to serve him uh, in an administrative role. And as a result, I would often have things that I needed to talk to him about. And so I would keep in my personal organiser, in my day timer, I would keep a section marked Terry. And I would write down all the things I wanted to talk to him about, because he's a busy man, travels a lot, often overseas, away from this country. And so when I'm with him, I want to have readily available the matters that I need to discuss with him. And so I would just keep a sheet of paper in the section marked Terry, which was items to discuss. And then when we got together, I had them very quickly to hand and could just get his opinion on certain matters or decisions on things that I needed him to make. So you have those major areas which could be related to home and to work, could be related to people, could be related to church life, major sections in that personal organiser, rather like a filing cabinet in days gone by where you would have a filing cabinet with a drawer and then dividers and then files within those dividers and so on. So it's a way of just keeping certain things in order in some shape. And it also just helps with goal planning as well that as you look towards some sort of event or in your life you're wanting to achieve such and such a thing, you can just be jotting down matters that will help you in planning those short-term goals, those medium-term goals, those long-term goals. And finally, because everything's captured in the one place, it's amazing what peace of mind that can give you that you know you're not going to forget something, that you know when an appointment is coming up, and so on. Now, to make all this work, I've developed some what I call ground rules. And I'd say that the first one, as I've already alluded to, is to make sure you always have it to hand. Always have it somewhere where you can just reach for it and write something down as it comes to mind. Next, that you never do write things somewhere else. I suppose that most of us at different times have got odd slips of paper, the back of an envelope, and just jotted a note down. And then you wanted to act on that note and you think, oh, what did I do with it? Where is it? It's got hidden under a book or it's blown onto the floor. No, put it into your personal organiser, then you know it's captured, can't get away. So write it there first. Next, have only one. Don't have two. For those of you who are employed, sometimes people will talk about having an office diary and a social diary. But if you do that, you're trying to divide up your life in a false way. You are you, whether you're in the office or whether you're at home. And the way our minds work are that inevitably you will think of things that you want to do at home while you're in the office and vice versa. So you need to have your life, as it were, contained in the one place, not in two. Your memory is not split. Your memory goes with you wherever you are. Now, whether it's a memory about home or a memory about your, your job. And the same is true with the extension to your memory the personal organiser. Now if you're writing on paper, which is the way I'm teaching you at the moment, always do it in pencil. Quite simply, it just means that when a change happens, and let's face it, it's inevitable that there will be changes, people will change appointments and so on, you can just erase that uh, appointment 
and write in something else or leave it blank. Otherwise the diary gets, gets very messy, very untidy and not a joy to use. Uh, if you are someone who uses a smartphone, and increasingly that is the case these days, there are programs which I'll tell you about which will allow you to do essentially the same thing. But obviously there you can very easily plan electronically and quickly make those erasures just by nature of the, of the device. The next ground rule is to start each day by planning. Now some people actually prefer to finish a day planning but at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day you're undisturbed. Your time's your own. There are no demands on your life. The telephone's not going and so on. And that's a good time to just think quietly about what you're hoping to do with the, with the next day or with the current day and jot down and put into the organizer, those things, and then do the prioritizing. Once you get into the busyness of your day-to-day -day life, you won't do it. Because as you're trying to do it, someone will interrupt you, the phone will go, whatever, and it won't get done. So time invested at the beginning of the day, and it doesn't take very long, maybe 10 minutes, will redeem a huge amount of time and make you feel much more satisfied when you get to the end of the day because you will have done the things that you really felt were important and you deliberately prioritized. So what are the key components of this personal organizer that I've been talking about? Well, there's a kind of reference section, things that are relatively static. They're information, they're data. So the calendar, maybe you like to look at the whole of the current year as a calendar. When does Easter fall this year, uh, etc. And then your addresses, very, very important, your contact addresses and telephone numbers, absolutely fundamental to much of our communication with other people. That is kind of in the reference and data section. And again, of course, with a smartphone, very easy to keep that contacts list somewhere. Uh, typically there will be an app or some sort that has all your contacts in it with all the information you need to know. And there of course things like calendars will come on to the appropriate app for your diary. Then there's the diary section itself. The, the um, parts that are related to time where we do the keeping of appointments, where we do the uh, discretionary time planning that I've been talking about. And then there are the other files, so the illustration that I gave you of keeping a list for Terry, those are in the other files. And so what we come to is a layout that looks like this, where you've got the to-do list on your left, and that's where you're just jotting down those items as they come to mind. You've then got a daily layout with the uh, total time scale of your day from 7 in the morning till 10 at night, where you can make appointments. For many people, they only need the, the middle part of that time, the kind of 9 till 5, 9 till 6 sort of time. If they go off to an office somewhere, that's where many of the appointments will happen. But then, of course, in church life, you will have meetings in the evenings, so they go into the latter part. And then on the right hand side there is the notepad where you're making your jottings about phone calls and about other thoughts that come to mind. Now when you're planning appointments I find it better not to do so in the day itself because it's quite easy for someone to call you and say I'd like to meet with you. When have you got a spare slot? And you look at your diary and you find, well, tomorrow I've got a spare slot. And that might be right and proper. But if you were to look at it on the basis of a calendar month, you may suddenly find that you already have many days that are very, very occupied. And so if you bring in another major appointment or major commitment on a particular day, it can have quite a knock-on effect which is negative to 
the other days around it because you suddenly become over busy. You think, I've got an appointment on Friday, I'm going to give a talk to someone or other, I've got to do the preparation, um, Thursday's already committed, if I don't do that on Wednesday I'm not going to get it done. So if you now offer an appointment to someone on that Wednesday, you've just taken away your preparation time. So much better would be to put an appointment to yourself in the diary on the Wednesday. And you say, right, in the morning, from 9 till 1, say, is a preparation time. And you write it in your diary, or you put it in your smartphone. And by doing that, if someone then phones you and asks to see you on Wednesday morning, you say, you look up in your diary and you say, well, I'm sorry, I already have an appointment. Can we make it Saturday or whatever? And by doing that, it gives you the space and the control. Do you remember how Gordon MacDonald says that he sees his time? Well, that's an example. He is taking control, in that case, of Wednesday morning. He's not just tucking in between other things the very necessary preparation if you're giving a talk on Friday. So to be able to see a month as a complete display is really helpful. You can see where your busy periods are and where your less busy periods are. So you've now got your do it list and we need to have some way of monitoring our progress. How are we getting on? Is the list getting dealt with? Have I remembered to do the things that I felt were high priority? And so on. And there are various symbols that I like to use for this. You've already seen how I use an asterisk to indicate that something is urgent. If I look at my do it list and I think, yeah, well, that one and that one are urgent, I'll immediately put an asterisk beside them. So that as I then do the prioritizing with the A's and the B's and the C's, I can take into account the fact that this is urgent as I'm trying to assess the A, B and C. Next, there are some items there that maybe I can delegate. Uh, my secretary, Jan, superb woman, and she does so much to help me. And so if I delegate, I'll put in square brackets there her initial, which is just a reminder to me that I've delegated to her. Now there are times when we get into the middle of something and suddenly we can't go any further. Perhaps uh, you need to make a phone call in order to take a particular project or activity further. You phone the person up and find that he's not in his office. So you leave a voicemail, but you can't do any more on this piece of work until you've heard back from him or until you've had that discussion. So beside the item on your do it list, I use a little inverted V, which just means I've got as far as I can, but I've still not finished. But it means that when I need to pick up another task, my eye doesn't go back to that one as an undone task and think, oh my goodness, I haven't done that. And then I think, oh yes, I did. I'm sure I left a phone message. Did I? Didn't I? By doing this, you feel, no, I know it's under control. I've done what I need to do. Then when you've completed a task, just put a little tick or a slash beside it to show that task is now completed and you can move on. Now, when you get to the end of a day, there will be things that you've probably not yet done. You'd hope to, but you knew they were in the B and C category. And so it doesn't surprise you, nor does it upset you. You're not going to have a sleepless night. So what do you do with it? When you come to the next day, you look back to the previous day and see the things that were incomplete, and you write them down again in the new day. Or if you have a smartphone, you just reallocate the day to this particular activity. 
Once you've done that, go back to the original day and put this horizontal arrow, which shows that you have transferred it to somewhere else. You needn't record where, because the fact that you've written it down before you've put the arrow there means you know you've written it down in the right place. You don't have to remember where, because you will come across it at the right moment. And then it may be there is something on your list that you think, well, I haven't done it, but it's now too late. Not important, I never saw it as a high priority. And you just put a, a down arrow beside it. And this signifies to you that I've made a decision and I've dropped that. So that if you were to thumb back through your organizer, maybe a couple of weeks, you won't suddenly spot an item on the diary for two weeks ago that you've not got a tick beside and think, oh my goodness, I've forgotten to do that. No, you'll find the down arrow, which means that you recognize you didn't do it, but you've now decided to drop it and you never will do it. And then, as you've seen already, because I have demonstrated it to you with the phone number after John Smith's name and with the date about that uh, meeting with the press officer, you just use brackets to reference something else. Whether it's a phone call so that you don't have to look back into your directory or whether it's uh, a diary note that you made while you're on the phone with someone, you know where all the information is if you put the date in there. And so we have urgency. We have a symbol for delegating any activity to someone else. We can show that a progress has been made on a particular task, but it isn't yet complete. We do make a note when something is completed. And then we show how we deal with stuff that's hanging over from a previous day, and we've transferred it or we've dropped it. And then finally, the brackets, which give us a reference of some sort. So it might look like this on your diary. So the phone call to John Smith, well, I couldn't get through. So I left a message on his voicemail. And I put in process, so I've not completed it, I've got to come back to it. And if nothing's happened today, the following day, it's got to go back onto my do it list as a new item. Next, the planning of the conference uh, agenda. Well, I've done that. I've put a little slash beside it. As indeed I have with completing the ministry proposal and the briefing of staff about their holidays. But notice the next couple, I didn't get done at all on the Monday. And when I got to the Tuesday, I wrote them in under the Tuesday's do it list. Then I went back to the Monday and I put that arrow. And it is important to do it in that order, that you write it down in the new place first, then you go back and put the arrow in. By doing that, it means that if you get disturbed after you've written it down, it doesn't get lost. If you had put the arrow in first, then you get disturbed, and you've not written it down in the new day, you probably will have forgotten about it, by the time you come back. And so it is important to do it first. Write it down, then go back to the previous page and put in an arrow. And then the meeting that was to be set up with the press officer, which I delegated to Jan, there's a slash there. I've confirmed that that meeting has indeed been set up. And so what we've done here is to plan a day in our life. Then when we come to the following day, anything that we brought forward does not carry a priority with it. You have to reprioritize according to other things that may be on the list. You may find you've already written something from an earlier occasion. You've already decided you're going to do it on the Tuesday. And so when you turn over to the Tuesday, you find there's something written in there. So the things you bring forward from Monday just go below that. And you then reprioritize the whole list. Now let's look at electronic systems. And here is a picture of an iPhone showing how there is a display there with the appointments at the top. 
and then with the tasks further down. Indeed, above the daily appointments, you've even got a week's display there. And I find that this is a very good app, and it's one that I'd recommend. It's one called Pocket Informant. It does cost, uh, in uh, the UK, I think it's eight or nine pounds, but that is, in one sense, quite a lot of money. In another, it's a very good investment into your future. Because if through this you can be more effective in your life, well, it then becomes a relatively small amount of money. So I'd very strongly recommend that you get it. It's a good program which deals with the whole of your prioritizing and you can do the A1, A2 system on it and so on. It's got lots of other features in as well, which you can discover for yourself. And then for the filing system, I use an app called Notemaster. Uh, this gives you the opportunity to create uh, kind of directories and files and documents and so on. Although it calls them categories, these would be your main directories. And here you'll see that I've got half a dozen on display, but I can scroll down and there would be more below that. And then uh, within that category, I've written something that you might call a file in this case my blog um, and then within that you'll see topics and distribution uh, would be two kind of documents that come into that file and on those documents you can then uh, have something uh, like a checklist if you want or just a straight uh, piece of screen that you can type stuff in various options available to you and I find that those two apps together, Pocket Informant and Notemaster, provide me with everything I've described to you using a paper-based system with the daytimer. But it may be that you can't afford a daytimer. They are quite expensive. And that you can't afford a phone. Those are very expensive. Or at least a smartphone is. And that you want to just have something simpler well, if you are able to purchase just an ordinary diary, I suggest you try to get one with a day being on one spread, so that you can do exactly what I've said with your appointments, or you know, do it on the left, and with your notes on the right. But conceivably, you're not as busy in detailed terms as other people, and you don't need as much paper space. There are some displays that would be the whole of a day on one column or on one page or across the page various different layouts you can buy in diaries and I've got to leave that to you really to be creative and to decide which of those suit you best. So what have we seen? Let's just summarize. We've tried to identify how we define time management. I've suggested that because we really can't manage time, we can only manage the events that fill that time, that I've called it the act of controlling events. I then showed you how planning is about writing your history in advance. It's trying to anticipate where you're going and filling in the steps that you would like to take to get there so that when you get to the end of the day you can look back and say that was a good day I saw all the people I wanted to see and I chilled out with the ones that I wanted to relax with but I also got these things done that I needed to get done it's been a good day rather than looking back at the end of the day and thinking hmm oh, I don't know what I did with that day it just seemed to disappear uh, nothing much has happened we then looked at the difference between appointment and discretionary time. Appointments usually involve someone else. They're definitely tied to a time, um, but of course an appointment can be with yourself. The illustration I used was preparing a talk. Or you can have an appointment with someone else, but it's a phone appointment rather than one where you actually have to meet. And then discretionary time, 
which is the time that you can use at your discretion. And that's what we've talked about most, that do it list that will help you with the planning. Then we talked about prioritizing that discretionary time to make sure that the things that you do are of the highest priority. So that when you do get to the end of your day, you know that the things that you've done have been the worthwhile things. That anything that's less important, more trivial, you can come back to some other time or you just forget it. But the things that were really important, you have done those. Then we looked at paper against electronic. I've emphasized the paper because that's actually the better vehicle for teaching you this material. But if you do have a smartphone, you can do everything I've said electronically. You have to make one or two variations which you'll discover for yourself as you choose an app. But the apps I then recommended were the Pocket Informant and the Note Master. And so we come to the end of this particular talk and as I do so I just want to tell you my own personal experience. Although in the past I have been a research engineer and I led a research team for 15 years in a children's hospital, I was always very aware that I actually was not particularly effective in the use of my time. I tried all sorts of things. I used to write lists. On my desk I'd have a bit of paper stuck there and I'd write long, long lists. And they were really quite discouraging. The list would get longer, I'd never seem to take anything off it and so on. Then I discovered post-its, those little sticky bits of paper. And I thought, well, maybe that's the answer. And so I'd write my discretionary time sort of items, my do-it lists, as it were, on those post-its. But they would get cluttered or the wind would blow and they would uh, get lost. That wasn't the solution. And I was really praying about this one day and going back many years now. And I was asking God to help me how do I organize my time better? And I was very fortunate, almost by chance, to meet someone who was visiting my country from the United States. And I had breakfast with him, I just wanted to get to know him. And at some stage I said to him, Mike, tell me, how do you organize your time? And he picked up a day timer and he said, I use that. I'd never even heard the expression time management in those days. And I looked at the thickness of that day timer and in my mind I dismissed it. I thought, there's no way I'm going to carry around something that's the size of a Bible with me all day. I was polite, I listened to him, but I'd already decided I wasn't going to do anything about it. Now I really thank God that that man was a very um, honourable person, very thoughtful person. And he returned to the United States and a few days later I received a teaching course on what's known as the Insight Time Management System. And I had a dilemma. I had been praying, was I going to see this as an answer to my prayers? Well, I'm very pleased to tell you that I decided I was. And so I got hold of what was then cassette tapes and I listened to them. And I put them into practice. And I can honestly say that it's well over 30 years now. In that time, it has changed my life. And it has changed the lives of many others. Because I've taught it to other people. I've been an influence into other people's lives by organizing conferences and so on. And this has been a very powerful tool in my hands to help me to be more effective and to achieve and accomplish some of the things that I've been able to accomplish. So I can honestly say, I don't think I would have achieved anything like as much if I had not had that chance meeting with Mike and he had faithfully sent me this material, which I then stuck to. And I want to tell you that story because that is the system that I've just taught you. 
And I can promise you that if you take hold of it, if you do everything I've said, you will find yourself much more satisfied, much more fulfilled. I'm sure there will be cultural elements to it that you find is difficult, and I can't solve all of those for you. I know that in many cultures, if you're busy with something and an older person walks into the room, you have to stop and talk to that person and maybe respond to a request. In my culture, I can say, well, look, it's lovely to see you. I'm very busy doing such and such a piece of work. Can we arrange to meet up sometime? And there and then we'll make a diary date to go out for a coffee together. That's very acceptable in my culture. It may not be in yours. But believe me, it is worth trying to find ways through these cultural differences and remind yourself that the Bible says we are to make the best use of time, that we're not to waste our time, that we are to plan with our minds, but attentive to the Holy Spirit. I trust that through these talks, your own life will be greatly helped and that as a result, many others will be very positively influenced by you and by what you do. May God bless you in it.